Today we're going to be looking at two of my top picks for the heavyweight class of four-wheel reversible seat swivel wheel strollers, the Stolka Trails and the Emmalunga NXT90. Both of these strollers are beasts, huge and heavy and off-road capable, with spacious, luxurious carry cots and seats, and all the bells and whistles you could ask for, with price tags to match. We'll start with a few stats. The Trails is a tad lighter, weighing in at 14 kilos versus the NXT 16. Folded down, the Trails takes a little more space at 95 by 50 by 63 centimeters versus the NXT's 76 by 40 by 30. Both have the same weight capacity in the seat, 15 kilos, which is the max allowed to report according to EU safety regulations. But the Trails has twice the weight capacity in the shopping basket, 10 kilos versus the NXT's 5. Okay, let's talk comfort, with their advantages and disadvantages to both. On the side of the Trails, several of the mechanisms you'll use daily feel a little more comfortable to activate. This is mainly a matter of folding and unfolding the stroller, but I also feel that the seat removal and position adjustment feel a little less fiddly. More importantly, the higher seat is quite nice, both for interacting with your child and also for accessing the underslung shopping basket. The Trails also has entirely removable seat fabrics, while the NXT 90's canopy is unfortunately riveted such that it requires hand washing. On the side of the NXT 90, the handle height is slightly more adjustable, it does fold down smaller, which can make the difference when you're already dealing with such large strollers. And more importantly, the driving characteristics are superb. The Trails is excellent as well, but the NXT 90 takes off-road capability to another level. We'll get into this more in a moment. Okay, let's talk mechanics then, top to bottom. Okay, we'll start with the seat units where there are a few mechanical differences. The footrest on the Emmalunga is adjustable in manners that the uh, Trails is not. Uh, I have in the past seen some problems with strollers that have this sort of a setup where when you have a larger child and they put a little bit too much pressure on that footboard, you can mess up the uh, teeth of the two discs that hold these mechanisms together. I have not yet encountered that problem with the NXT90. Um, it is a little bit nice to have that adjustable footrest. Uh, in relation to the canopies, as I already mentioned, the canopy is not actually removable on the NXT90 because they've stuck with this riveted setup, which they've had on pretty much all of their strollers. Uh, I think that's a little bit dumb. Uh, and in general, the feeling of using the canopy, um, it seems like the positions are found a little bit easier with the trails than they are with the NXT90. In relation to adjusting seat position, uh, you can uh, adjust the seat position on the trails from both sides via this white button here on the chassis itself, and that's a very simple mechanism. Spring-loaded, it has uh, very few parts, and uh, I have never seen anything go wrong really with that mechanism. On the NXT 90, they have this large bar that runs up the backside. You have to pull up in order to adjust seating positions, and uh, that's a little bit of an unnecessary complexity and size for a mechanism, and I have sometimes seen some problems inside here uh, when added pressure causes those parts in there to misalign or wear down a bit. Okay, we'll move on then to the handles and the telescopic mechanisms, which are quite different. And uh, you'll start to notice a bit of a theme with the Emmalunga NXT90. I said it was a couple kilos heavier, and the reason for that is that uh, it is of a slightly more sturdy construction when we're talking about materials and connection points. Uh, this is not, again, to say that the trails is uh, constructed in a weak way, but in relation to the NXT90, um, the NXT90 will take more punishment. It's one of the reasons why it is a little bit better off-road. Uh, looking at the handles then, you'll notice immediately that the height adjustment mechanism on the top of the handle is a bit thicker on the Amalunga. They've been doing this sort of uh, mechanism for uh, many different generations, different sorts of models of stroller. They realize they need something very sturdy so it won't break. It has an inner plate which gives it sort of a backup support on that mechanism. You don't find that on the trails. That being said, I haven't had problems with this mechanism on the trails either, uh, but it is a little bit sturdier here. On the NXT 90, when we move down then to the telescopic mechanism, the telescopic mechanism is designed such that you can adjust the height in this manner as well. Um, in the end, the trails still can actually go higher than the highest point of the Emmalunga NXT 90. The NXT 90 can go lower. Uh, it is kind of nice to have that adjustable telescopic uh, setup. You don't have that on the trails. On the trails, the telescopic mechanism is simply a uh, component of folding down the stroller. And um, the trails telescopic mechanism is weaker in general. Uh, it involves internal wires that activate relatively small plastic mechanisms in order to hold it in place. It is one of the weaker points on the trails, whereas on the NXT90, it is a, a clamp setup, uh, which you can also have problems with sometimes, but uh, generally this is a, a sturdier sort of construction for the telescopic mechanism as well. 
and uh, less likely to develop faults in the long run. Okay, moving down to the central folding mechanisms on both of these strollers. Uh, both of these strollers, because they have that telescopic handle, have relatively simple concepts when it comes to the central fold mechanism itself. Uh, if you have seen any of our videos regarding Boogaboo strollers, they tend to have very complex central folding mechanisms, and that's because all three uh, protruding elements of the stroller, the front frame, the rear frame, and the handle, all have to fold together. Whereas in the design of both of these, the handle uses that telescopic function in order to slide down into the front frame, essentially, and the uh, central folding mechanism simply unlocks the rear frame so that it can fold towards the front frame. That being said, uh, I feel that on the NXT 90, they made the means of activating that folding mechanism unnecessary complex when essentially all that's happening is a peg is pushing out of the central folding bar and locking in the rear frame. Uh, it still involves two buttons and a little bit more effort than it does with the triggers on the trails. However, uh, the again, the sort of way that it's constructed is a little bit more sturdy, takes a little bit more punishment on the NXT 90 than it does on the trails. And I do notice that after several years, say five years, four years, something like that, depending on the amount of hard use that the stroller has been put to, you do sometimes get a weakness here with the rear frame, and uh, you can sometimes develop some issues here um, because the majority of it is constructed plastic, whereas there is a decent amount of metal here. On the other hand, even though this is a little bit more heavy duty, uh, usually right from the get-go, there's a bit of looseness, as you can see, uh, with the rear frame. This is not an indication that something is broken. It's simply part of the design of how the central fold works. And it actually adds a, a little bit of um, suspension in a way when you're going up and over bumps. Uh, overall, I feel the Emelunga NXT90 is a little bit more sturdily constructed, but because it's fiddly to activate uh, in particular, I prefer the uh, folding mechanism on the trails. Okay, let's have a closer look then at the lower rear frame on both of these strollers, in particular the suspension and the brake systems. Both of these have solid suspension built into the rear frames, uh, which will help them, of course, get over bumps. Uh, I again feel the NXT 90 outperforms the trails a little bit in this respect, but the trails really does have a very solid suspension unit, uh, which is located here in the center, while the NXT 90 suspension is on the lower end bars. Um, in relation to the brake systems, both of these brake systems have gone through a few iterations. The Emelunga a little bit more, uh, since they've used this similar sort of a brake bar on multiple models, uh, while the Trails has simply rebuilt its own brake system a couple of times as they've developed the model in general. Uh, the model current iteration of the brake system on the Trails uh, is set up to deal with problems that had occurred before with the uh, brake sticking and so on, and it's a very simple system. Uh, the pedal activates a bar that runs to the opposite wheel, and uh, also, of course, activates the wheel on the side of the brake system. Very little actually goes wrong, generally, with the brake system on the trails. Um, it doesn't on the NXT 90 as well, but I've never been a big fan of this brake system. They had this sort of a setup uh, with the uh, Emelunga City Cross and the Nitro and several generations. And they, while they have sort of reformed it for the NXT series and made it better, uh, it still has this basic problem where you're dealing with large metal bars that run through these channels here, uh, with very high tension springs. And what I notice over time, and now I'm talking about a lot of time, but if you're looking at it from a longevity perspective, is that if, um, if it starts to rust inside those tubing areas, you wind up having trouble where those high suspension springs aren't going to push out enough, but there's enough pressure that it starts to wear down on the pedal. And I know that the pedal has been made a bit more solid, but it is still plastic. And so you can wind up with some wear here, uh, in which case the brakes will not stick after a while. Uh, I don't think there's a lot of problems of this currently out there with the NXT, but I'm willing to bet you're going to get the same sort of problems with this that you got with City Cross and Nitro and other sorts of uh, Emelunga strollers when you're looking at, say, the six-year mark uh, of a stroller's lifetime. Okay, we'll have a look at the front frames then. Uh, in particular, the swivel functions and the inbuilt wobble protect system and sort of the overall uh, feeling of sturdiness and terrain capability when you're dealing with the front ends. Both of these have 10 inch front wheels. Uh, both of them have, in my opinion, suboptimal designs on their swivel locking mechanisms. I've never been a big fan of this system on the um, NXT because it only has a small peg here that locks this in place. I've seen that wear down quite a lot. Uh, the trails is a little bit better, but unfortunately the button for activating the swivel lock is quite hard on the fingers to use. In relation to wobble problems, that means when you take the stroller a little bit too fast, 
the front wheels will start wobbling and this happens when the axle starts to wear down the inside housing. So the trails had some problems with this and they redesigned the front wheels. It now has a suspension pad which holds the wheel tightly in place and now we don't have a lot of wobble problems uh, related to that. Although you do have to be a little careful with what sorts of lubrication you use still with the front wheels on the trails. Uh, the Emelunga does not have any sort of inbuilt suspension protect, but I've noticed that they have a much thicker uh, groove on the axle for locking it in place. And I generally feel actually that uh, if you have to run to catch a bus or something like this, uh, it, you will get more uh, speed without problems when it comes to the NXT90. And that just goes again to the overall rigidness of the design and how that impacts its drivability overall. So which one of these is right for you? Well, as I said at the beginning, both of these strollers are excellent if you're looking at getting something in the heavier class. Both are strongly constructed, perform well off-road, and have lots of carrying space. Both will fit your life best if you either have a very large car or don't use a car at all and need a stroller that can act as a mobile base as you move through your day without wearing down quickly from a lot of use. There are a few lesser differences that I mentioned that might be that special key for you, like the higher seat on the trails or the more adjustable handle on the NXT90. But I think the important difference here comes down to weight and drivability. Both of these strollers are off-road capable, but the NXT90 is a real country stroller. It's a bit heavier, but it's also a bit sturdier. So if I lived on a farm or had to traverse a wooded trail with some roots and rocks daily, I'd go for the NXT90. By contrast, if it's more of those big, capable, mobile base qualities that you're after, like you need a lot of space to pack for a day at the lake, then the trails probably has a slight edge. In any case, we hope you found this video interesting. And if you did, we ask that you subscribe, as it helps us to continue making videos in the future. Thank you.